it's time to dig, dig, dig and finally get some blocks to drop something with custom loot tables. Minecraft modding courses with close to 100 topics ranging from custom tools and armor to custom block entities all the way to custom mobs linked in the description below. Oh, right, fans, back and gentlemen, more in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom loot tables to Minecraft, and this is going to be done in three steps. Step number one, we will add the custom loot table JSON file and I will once again show you the vanilla loot tables, which are going to be an exceptional resource for you to understand any type of loot table, basically. The second step involves our blocks being added to some vanilla tags as they are required for our blocks to actually drop something because there's a very specific block behavior property that we have set on our blocks. I'll be showing this in a moment. And step number three is going through all of those steps again, but also adding the, but also adding custom ore blocks because those loot tables are a little bit crazier. So let's jump into this craziness by first of all going to once again our data folder, tutorial mod, and creating a new directory called loot underscore tables, making sure we write this correctly, loot underscore tables. And inside of there, we want to make another new directory called blocks. Very important here that this is blocks, not block. It is blocks multiple ones. And let's create the JSON file. And the first JSON file is going to be the sapphire underscore block dot JSON. This time, once again, the JSON file name has to match with the name given in the mod blocks class right here. And then this basically sort of connects this particular block with this particular loot table. For the ease of everything, I will copy over the contents. However, you have access to those in the description below in the GitHub repository. So you can do the same thing. And once we have copied those over for the sapphire block, you can see, first of all, we have pools defined over here. Now, in this case, there's only one pool and it has zero bonus roles, but it has one role. The role basically determines, OK, what kind of entries are we taking? In this case, we only have one entry. So what's going to happen is the Sapphire block will always drop when this loot table is sort of activated. The condition here simply makes sure that when the block actually gets destroyed by a, an explosion, that the Sapphire block also drops. Now, to customize this, really, you just have to change the name of the file and the name of whatever the item is that drops. So basically, I can just drag this into the same folder while holding control, and we can change this to the raw underscore sapphire underscore block. And then here in the entries, I literally just want to say this now drops a raw sapphire block. Easy as that. And as I said, let's go down to the external libraries once again to our trusty old net Minecraft client extra 120.1 or whatever your version might be data Minecraft. We want to go to loot tables, we want to go to blocks. And here, every single loot table for every single block in Minecraft is available to you to see and to understand. Now, most of them are just going to, of course, drop themselves. That should be fairly self-explanatory. However, things like or, well, they are a little bit more complicated, but that is taking away a little bit too much over here because we will see this in just a moment. First of all, we have to make sure that our loot actually drops from our blocks and this doesn't work just yet. Now, why does this not work? Well, if we go back to our mod blocks class, we're copying over the properties from the iron block. And if we middle mouse button click on this and actually go all the way right to right about here, we see this requires correct tool for drops method that is called on the iron block. Now, what does that mean? That means that it's going to take a look. Hey, this particular block, what tool does it need for us to actually drop the loot table that we've defined over here? And in this case, we haven't defined any tool, therefore it's not going to drop anything because it doesn't know which tool should be used for, well, basically breaking this block in order for it to properly drop something. This shouldn't come as a surprise to you. As you probably know, for example, stone cannot be harvested with your hand, right? You can't really do that because, well, then it's just not going to drop something. Or similarly, if you were to use an axe for stone, also doesn't drop anything. And for this, we need to add our blocks to a custom tag. Now a tag, in the highest level overview is a collection of blocks, items, and sometimes other things that have a shared or similar purpose. In this case, the purpose is to show the game, hey, these blocks can all be mined with a pickaxe or an axe, something like that. And also, hey, these blocks require a certain tool tier. So for example, at least diamond or at least iron, things like that. And those are added in the data folder, right click new directory called Minecraft a very popular game. Maybe you've heard of it. And inside of there, we'll make a new directory called tags. Inside of there, we'll make another new directory called blocks. And then inside of there, one last directory, and that is going to be called the mineable. Make sure that all of those are written correctly. Otherwise, you will run into issues. And we will start with the mineable folder over here, where we will create, first of all, a new axe.json over here, making, of course, that everything contained in this particular tag is only going to be mineable with an axe. Now, the general way a tag file looks like is like this. 
It is fairly unspectacular. It is literally just a list of values. And this list of values is going to be blocks in our case. Now, we don't have anything that is going to be mineable with the axe. Therefore, we actually don't really need this. However, I do want to create all of the JSON files that exist just for you to have them so you can sort of understand, okay, this is the axe, shovel, pickaxe, and the hoe. So let's drag the axe JSON in the same mineable folder and we'll rename this to the pickaxe JSON and we'll use this in just a moment. We then drag this into the same folder again, call this the shovel JSON. And then here, last but certainly least, we're going to call this the hoe JSON. Who uses hoes, but who knows? Okay, that was maybe a terrible joke, but we are not quite done yet. Maybe you also want to restrict what the tool level is that your particular block can be mined with. You've seen this previously as well. For example, redstone ore cannot be mined with a stone pickaxe. And for this, you actually want to drag your JSON file into the blocks folder because those go into the blocks folder, not the mineable folder. Easy mistake to make. And those are going to be called needs underscore iron underscore tool. And then we can drag this once again into the blocks folder. And this is going to be the needs stone tool. And then last but not least, this is the needs diamond tool. Phenomenal. Let's first of all tackle the pickaxe JSON. Well, inside of here, we literally just put the value. So this is going to be tutorial mod colon sapphire underscore block. And then the second one, which is going to be tutorial mod colon raw underscore sapphire underscore block. And that is it. With this, the sapphire block and the raw sapphire block are now both mineable with a pickaxe, but in this case, with every pickaxe. So this goes from wood all the way up to netherite and beyond in theory. If you wanted to restrict this, you can, of course, take the value over here and add it, for example, to the needs iron tool for, let's say, the sapphire block. And for the raw sapphire block, let's say we even need a diamond tool here in this case, just for the sake of argument, for me to show you the difference, basically. And before people will ask, yes, there also exists a needs netherite tool tag, but that is under the forge namespace. So in the data folder, you want to right click new directory called forge. And then inside of here, we want to do tags. And then inside of there, we want to do blocks. And then inside of there, we can create the new file called the needs underscore netherite underscore tool dot JSON. And then whatever values we put into here are then only going to be mineable with netherite and beyond. So anytime you use one of those needs x tool JSON file, it is always that tier and above that basically works with that particular block. And now we've done all of this, we can now actually go into the game and our blocks are going to drop something for the first time. Let's take a look. All right, so we find ourselves back in Minecraft and let's just take a look, swing our stone pickaxe over here for the raw. And well, what we will find is that it takes quite a long time and it is going to drop nothing here in this case, similar to the normal sapphire block. This will also drop nothing because I believe that we have put it into the iron and the diamond here. So let's take the iron pick to this and you will find that this will also not drop something. However, if we're going to use the diamond pickaxe, all of a sudden, wham, we are getting a raw sapphire block. Similar when we use the iron pickaxe right here you can see, there we go, a block basically drops. And of course, an axe here, you can already see it takes forever to mine, basically signifying that this is not going to happen. So that's pretty cool. Now, let's add some ores. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm making this a little bit easier for myself because we're going to add one ore and then I'm going to be copying over the rest of them. And I'll also copy over the JSON files because, well, at this point, a block stitch JSON file, if you've seen the block tutorial, it should be Pretty self-explanatory at this point, especially the normal ones for normal blocks, which the ores are, except there's something a little bit different. Let's take a look. So we're going to have another public static final registry object here of type of block here in this case, and that is going to be the sapphire underscore or equal to, of course, the register block method. We're going to call this the sapphire underscore or, and then we're going to make a supplier of a new, and this is not going to be a block, but a drop experience block here in this case, because when you mine an ore, it actually also drops experience. And this is what we also want to have here for our custom ores. This is going to be block behavior dot properties dot copy. And we'll just copy blocks dot stone here. In this case, I basically just want the stone for the sound mostly. And we can then basically say maybe this has a different strength, right? Because stone has 1.5 if I recall correctly. So let's do this too. So it takes a little bit longer to break than stone. And then we also want to call the requires correct tool for drop method. Now this is inherited by stone, obviously. However, I still want to call this explicitly just so that you keep it in the back of your mind. And after that closing parenthesis, we can now add a uniform int dot of, and we can say between, let's say three and six over here, end it with a semicolon. And there we go. We got a sapphire or block registered. Now, what is this uniform into craziness? Well, it basically just means that we're going to get between three and six experience orbs when we mine the sapphire ore. To take a look at the vanilla numbers, you can middle mouse button click on the class name over here, middle mouse button click again, and you can see that, for example, let's say we want to know, oh, what is diamond or drop? 
Let's take a look. Let's go all the way to the right. And here we go between three and seven. There you go. And once again, with the numbers, you can always play around with those. That is actually highly recommended. So do do that. And I will be just copying over the rest of the ore blocks over here. We're going to have the deep slate ore, of course. We're going to have the nether ore and the end ore as well. I just changed the strength values around here just a little bit because well, why not, right? And you can, of course, also change around the uniform inter values over here from how much experience is basically going to drop the numbers. Always highly recommended to play around with those. However, I do really implore you to copy from Deep Slate for the Deep Slate Ore, Netherrack for the Nether Ore, and the Endstone for the Endstone Ore, because then those will actually retain the sound, and that's quite important for coherence. Then let's add them to the Creative Mode tab. There we go. And the translation. Should be fairly self-explanatory at this point. Nothing crazy going on right here. And as I've said, I will be copying over the JSON files as well, but those are literally just the normal JSON files that you've seen before, so it really shouldn't be anything crazy. And not only that, the JSON files are of course also available in the GitHub repository in the description below, so you can always double and triple check with your own or copy over the contents of those, so you should be totally fine. And what we'll also definitely need is the textures over here. There we go, the last thing to copy over. And then we can proceed to, well, the loot tables again. For the loot tables, I actually recommend you go once again to the external libraries to NetMinecraft Client Extra 120.1 or whatever your version might be to the blocks over here and we'll search for the copper ore over here. Making sure we write this correctly. Copper ore, there we go. And we will just yoink this one. So we'll just select this, press Control C and go all the way up back to our own blocks folder over here. And we'll put this in and I'll just do the sapphire ore here in this case. And then we're going to be met with this insanity. But no worries at all. The first thing we want to change here, of course, is the copper ore. And that's going to be tutorial mod colon sapphire underscore ore. Now, why might this be the case? Well, if we have a tool that has silk touch associated with it, then we want to drop the actual block itself instead of the raw variant of it. And there we go. That's literally what we need to change right here. And then we go down a little bit more to the raw copper here. And we change this to tutorial mod colon raw underscore sapphire. And now when we mine this block, it's going to drop between two and five raw sapphire here in a uniform distribution. You can, of course, always change those numbers, play around with those, however, which way you like, highly recommended. Lastly, I'll also change the random sequence to tutorial mod colon blocks slash sapphire underscore or. There we go. So what we can do once again is copy the JSON files over by just dragging it into the same folder while holding control. And then pretty much we only want to change the name right here. So deep slate sapphire ore that it drops this one and then also take this over to the bottom over here. And then of course you can always change the uniform distribution. So how many are going to drop? Maybe the deep slate is going to drop a little bit more or a little bit less depending on what you basically want to do with your own mod. All right, there we go. I've also added the endstone and the nether ore loot tables over here just so that we have them. And now the last thing to do is just add our ore blocks to, well, some of our mineable JSON files and the needs X tool JSON files. And then we are complete. There we go. Added all of them to the pickaxe over here because, well, of course, in this case, all of them should be mineable with a pickaxe. Let's spread them out under the tool tiers. So let's, for example, let's say the endstone over here, that should only be mineable with the netherite tool. Mm, interesting thing indeed. And then for the sake of argument, let's say the nether one, that one should only be mineable with stone, let's say, for example, just for the heck of it. Why not just be crazy over here? And there we go. Now, in a future tutorial, we'll see how we can make this about, mm, I would say, approximately 128,000% easier because this is going to be then done with data generation. However, once again, I want you to go through the process here once. It's quite important for me that you understand Okay, this is the loot table. This is the loot table, Jason. You roughly have some idea of what certain things in here do. Definitely not all of it, but you at least know, okay, I can change this if I need to. I can change this if I need to. This means, hey, okay, this will drop when the silk touch is done. This will drop when not, when we don't have silk touch. And it's going to drop between two, 2 and 5 over here. I just want you to have a little bit of an understanding here. Same thing with the JSON files here for the tags, right? Those are actually also quite important. And that where, where they are, why they're there. And that's sort of the general idea. But now let's jump into the game and have our ores drop something as well. All right, fans, was back in Minecraft. And let's just take a look. Let me swing my pickaxe and you can see there we freaking go. This works, this works, this should also work. However, this should not work because the end stone ore should only be mineable with the netherite pickaxe. So let's take a look at the diamond one. Shouldn't drop neither. And it does not. And the netherite, and there we go, it does drop. Absolutely freaking spectacular. And of course, the higher tier works on all the other ones as well. Absolutely freaking awesome. And that is custom ores and custom loot tables for blocks added.
absolutely freaking spectacular as always of course all of the code is available to you in the description below in the github repository so that's gonna be it for this tutorial right here next time we'll make an advanced item right here in this video hope to see you there so yeah